So everyone in the neighborhood is getting the same amount of rain falling on their site, but the amount of runoff that could potentially flow onto their site differs depending on the contributing watershed. So this side of the street, where our, my brother and I's property is, its watershed starts basically at that traffic circle. And then the water's flowing down the curb, but only receiving water from this half of the street. Interesting thing here is, I'm standing on the crown, or the middle of the street, because um, it's higher than the street gutter on either side of the street. I'm basically standing on a ridge line between two separate watersheds. Okay, because this is where the water flows two separate directions. Um, this side receives 10 times the runoff that this side receives. On this side of the street, the top of the watershed is that traffic circle at the intersection. And just this half of the street draining this way. But this half of the street has 10 times the runoff because there's a student housing complex out of the shot that drains its roof runoff into the parking lot, and then the parking lot drains to the street, which then comes along and comes around this corner. So, you should see trees on this side of the street that are 10 times as large and dense as the trees on this side of the street. Because unfortunately, the water is not being consciously harvested on this side of the street. They're missing the potential that's there, just awaiting for them to see and tap into it. <laughs> so, I love our side of the street, but our neighbors could be so much better if they just tapped into what's here, but we just haven't seen yet. We are capturing water at multiple points from the very top all the way down with curb cut features that allow street runoff to be directed into street side basins. In the smaller rainfall events, all the water will be absorbed in those basins. But in the larger rainfall events, there's going to be more water than they can fully infiltrate. So some of the surplus water will overflow and continue down the street. That can get captured in the next basin. So as we move down, more and more water is available and the trees express that. These trees get larger as we move down the street. Where we started was here, where the curb was already dipped thanks to uh, a, dr a previous driveway location. We did the same thing further up, upstream. So this didn't take any cutting of the curb, um, which at the time was illegal. <laughs> so this was legal. This was cheaper. We just utilized the existing dip in the curb. And then we dug a basin here. We dipped the path. Um, actually, we didn't have to do much of that at all because there used to be a driveway that went here and drained all the water right through here. It was a problem. The water would go through the, the one car garage, out the back door and flood the neighbor. That was a problem. So we turned the problem into a solution by um, creating a big earthen rock berm here so the water could no longer flood into the building and into the neighbor's yard. Instead, it stayed in the public right-of-way. And we created an eddy basin so the water fills here, goes all the way back here, behind the olive tree there, fills up. In fact, this is a, this is a water gauge. So it um, goes up to 12 inches. So the water level in a big storm easily gets 12 inches deep. But behind me, it gets deeper still because the slope is going down. So we easily get 18 to 2 foot of depth of capacity. Um, once this is filled, water backs up to itself, and then the surplus continues down the street. So I like to call it a backwater, an eddy basin, as opposed to a flow-through basin, because water doesn't flow through. It just fills, backs up at the entry point, and then the surplus continues down the street. So the great thing about this, it's largely self-maintaining. You don't have mulch that floats out. Um, instead, you're gaining mulch from the leaf drop gathered on the street runs in. So this type of basin is great for an organic matter mulch as opposed to a heavier rock mulch that you might use in a flow through basin where you don't want the mulch carried with the running water. So here we are with a city uh, installed street runoff harvesting system. Let's get off the street. Here comes the cars, but that's the inlet to the street side landscape. 
So the great thing here is this was um, inspired by the guerrilla street side water harvesting actions in our neighborhood, uh, which helped legalize the harvesting of street runoff in street side and in street uh, water harvesting landscapes. Uh, cool thing too, when they redid the street and the sidewalk, rather than throwing away the old sidewalk chunks, it was reused within the infrastructure, so was the old curb. However, as a critique, I would say they went too heavy on the rock because uh, it's multiple rocks deep and now sediment is filled in around the rock. So uh, I would have preferred to see more organic matter and less heavy transported material. Nonetheless, huge improvement, 180 degree shift. Instead of street draining directly to storm drain and water out of the system, now we've got street draining to street side landscape helping beautify and shelter the street side environment. Pretty cool, but we can go further.